hello people in this video we want to look at adenosine adenosine you have heard a lot right like you have adenine guanine like those uh, nucleotides nucleotides nucleobases right this is a nucleobase very very same it is the same nucleobase only it is but it is used in the treatment of uh, per oxysmal supraventricular tachycardia so basically where we are you know we are looking at the antiarrhythmic drugs here in antiarrhythmic drugs we have uh, seen class 1 class 2 class 3 class 4 in uh, this is none of the classes actually it is uh, separate for treatment of paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia they will give adenosine okay or digoxin also can be given so in which chapter are we we are in antiarrhythmic drugs chapter of pharmacology we saw what rhythm means what arrhythm arrhythmia means what then uh, normal cardiac action potential how it will be then what are the causes for uh, arrhythmia so basically we saw all this then we saw the mechanisms of arrhythmias then we saw the types of cardiac arrhythmia in which you have this uh, psvt paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia basically this one look at this so if this is the heart so here you have the ventricles correct so anything above the ventricles will become supraventricular okay so everything will become either atrial or something above the ventricle so that is supraventricular so if there is some cause here which is leading to tachycardia that will be supraventricular tachycardia now paroxysmal means what paroxysmal means very random sudden it comes by itself goes by itself these episodes you cannot predict that means paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia for which the treatment will be drug of uh, drug will be adenosine okay now what is PSVT? It's the sudden onset of episodes of atrial tachycardia. Obviously, it is atrial, it is supraventricular atrial tachycardia with 1 is to 1 atrioventricular conduction. This uh, mostly due to circus movement type of re-entry. Re-entry is important word occurring within around AV node. Okay, it's slightly uh, complicated, right? So, basically, you understand here it is atrial tachycardia. So, because of the Circus movement type of re-entry, it is atrial tachycardia, it is sudden episode, it, you cannot predict, so that is paroxysmal, right, it is uh, re-entry within the, uh, or around the AV node or using an accessory pathway between the atria and the ventricle, okay, either uh, around the AV node some re-entry or some path other than this between the atria and ventricle, that will be Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, WPW, okay. So, this is what is paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. So, we saw the classification of antiarrhythmic drugs. Then we have seen the location of adenosine here. It's, it's not in any of these classes. Remember, it's outside of these classes for treatment of paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. Adenosine can be used. The other choice will be digoxin. So, basically for uh, treating uh, paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, they have something called as a valsalva maneuver. Valsalva maneuver is their maneuver. Okay, here this valsalva maneuver it uh, can terminate a supraventricular tachycardia. So basically, here splash cold water, ice cold water on face, hyperflexion. This is hyperflexion, right? Head between knees, like a baby right in the mother's womb hyperflexion that was universal flexion actually in the womb this is hyperflexion head between the knees okay this is what they are saying this attack can be terminated if this does not work then the drug of choice is adenosine okay adenosine IV is the drug of choice if this valsalva maneuver doesn't work okay so the other options are available uh, verapamil, diltiazem, esmolol and uh, then they also said you can prevent recurrences with this uh, verapamil, diltiazem, uh, propranolol, etc. Digoxin also may be prescribed. That's what we saw in the classification, right? Digoxin. So, this verapamil, diltiazem and all are class 4 drugs. Remember, esmolol beta blocker will be class 2 drug, correct? You remember the classification, right, guys? Where, uh, where which drug comes? Verapamil, diltiazem comes in class 4. You have already seen this in the classification. Where does digoxin come? Under this PSVT only. What about esmolol and all those uh, beta blockers? They come in class 2. You see here, esmolol, propranolol, all these come in the class 2, okay, of antiarrhythmic drugs. Now, let's go to adenosine. So, we have started off with adenosine. Now, we will move to the 
uh, pharmacokinetics here. It is an ultra short acting endogenous purine signal molecule. What do you mean by ultra short? It, you know, it's half life, 10 seconds. Half life is 10 seconds. Can you believe adenosine? It is endogenous molecule. Means what? We ourselves synthesize it within our body. It's an endogenous molecule. It's a purine molecule. It's a purine signal molecule. It's a nucleobase. You remember? How remember adin, adenine, adenosine, then you add sugar, it will become adenosine. To this uh, adenosine, if you add the phosphate something, it will become uh, ATP, is it? Nucleotide, it will become. Remember all this you have studied in 12th. What is uh, ATP? Adenosine triphosphate, correct? Yeah. So uh, this is an endogenous uh, molecule. Purine it is. And its T half is 10 seconds, so it's ultra short acting. So uh, how, why is it only 10 seconds? Because it's uptaken into RBC's endothelial cells. It is converted to inosine. It is converted to 5 AMP and inosine, right? So obviously, it was going to be converted into adenosine monophosphate and inosine. It is eliminated also in one passage through coronary circulation. It will be eliminated. That's why it's 10 seconds. That's all, okay? So this is one photo we got from internet guys, adenosine injection. So in, actually it is, remember, it, it can terminate a paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia episode. So yeah, it is an emergency drug. So it is, how do you administer it? Rapid in, IV injection. Within one to three seconds, stuck you should give. This is the only one probably, or it's one of those rare drugs where they say you should give uh, rapid IV. Right? Otherwise, everywhere you have read slow IV, slow IV, remember? So, this is a rapid IV injection. Within 1 to 3 seconds, it can be given. Either it can be given as a free base or it can be given as a ATP, right? So, you can give it as a free base or ATP. It is injected, uh, if it is injected ATP, it is converted again into adenosine only. So, the paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia episode terminates within 30 seconds. Within 30 seconds, the episode will get terminated. Most episodes, 90% of the episodes which are involving AV node, right, they will get um, terminated, okay. So, how much went into your head, guys? Uh, is it going into your head at all, adenosine? So, what is adenosine? Let's take a quick recap. Adenosine is what? It's an endogenous purine base, correct. It's an endogenous purine base. It's a purine. Then, it is given how? It is given fast IV. It is given fast IV. And what is it given to treat, guys? It is given to treat paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. Within 30 seconds, this episode can get terminated. Right? 90% of the episodes which involve AV node can be terminated, giving adenosine. Okay? It has to be injected IV. Guys, pay attention here. Now we are moving on to the mechanism of action of adenosine. See, these adenosine uh, G protein coupled receptors are there on SA node fibers. Okay? What receptors are there on SA node fibers? The adenosine receptors itself are there on uh, SA node. So now what happens? The pacemaker gets depressed and there will be bradycardia. Good, no? That is what we wanted to achieve. Because what was there? Tachycardia was there, right? Paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia was there. Now you are going to reduce the heart rate by having this bradycardia. Interesting, right? Not so difficult to understand. Okay, then um, on AV node fibers also it will work. On AV node fibers what it will do? prolongation of ERP, slowing of conduction, the conduction will become slow and in atrium also something will happen, shortening of the uh, shortening of the action potential will happen, reduced excitability. So everything is reduced. On the atrium it's working, on the AV node it's working, it is working on the SA node also. So a lot of work it is doing. Shortening of action potential, reduced excitability. Okay, basically guys you understood it's working on all these things. Adenosine, uh, indirectly it reduces calcium current also they are saying. So there is depression of the re-entrant circuit. Depression of the re-entrant circuit through AV node. So majority of the paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardias are terminated because of this reason. Because from the beginning you have been seeing paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia means AV node some issue, right? That's what you saw here. Remember in this, remember read this again. It is the onset of episodes of atrial tachycardia. Mostly due to the circus movement type of re-entry occurring around the AV node or some pathway between the atria or the ventricle, right? So 
So you understood the mechanism of action of adenosine. This has been taken from KD Tripathi guys. If you want you can read more there. Time to go to the advantages of adenosine. It is better than verapamil. It is better than verapamil. Its action lasts less than one minute. So is that a good thing? Action is lasting less than one minute. It is better than verapamil. Its action lasts one uh, less than one minute. Adverse effects are transient. Even cardiac arrest, if it occurs, are transient. Adverse effects are transient. So very little time they occur. Low hemodynamic deterioration. It can be given to patients with hypotension. Patients with congestive heart failure or even those who are receiving beta blockers. Because in all these cases, you cannot give verapamil. It is contraindicated. So adenosine is a very good choice for people who are having all these kind of situations also. It is uh, safe in uh, safe in wide QRS tachycardia. So if there is some wide QRS tachycardia also, it is safe. Verapamil again is not safe there. It may be effective in patients uh, not responding to verapamil. So if somebody is not responding to verapamil, you can try adenosine. That's what they are saying. Guys, so we are done with the advantages of adenosine over verapamil. It's more like advantage of adenosine in treating Paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia over verapamil. Sounds like that more, right? Okay, guys, let's move on to the uses of uh, adenosine. You have already seen it is used to treat paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. It can be used in the diagnosis of tachycardias which are dependent on AV node uh, to induce, uh, hold on, to induce coronary vasodilation, to induce coronary vasodilation, to induce some hypotension you only want to create some to produce some controlled hypotension well we are going with these two to diagnose tachycardia which is caused due to AV node and to treat uh, paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia we like these two what about the adverse drug reactions of adenosine it basically it can cause chest pain guys and it can cause fallen blood pressure ventricular standstill and even ventricular fibrillation can occur but these side effects are very transient you know because it has a very short duration of action, just 10 seconds is its T half. Bronchospasms can be there, so verapamil is the drug of choice for asthmatics uh, who have uh, paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. Remember this, adenosine causes bronchospasm, it should not be given to asthmatics. Adenosine uh, has to be injected large in, in a large vein, you know. And it has very brief action, you have to inject it rapid, 1 to 2 seconds, 1 to 3 seconds. Therefore, it's not suitable for Profile access for prevention, you cannot give it. That's all. Then, drug interactions of adenosine, guys. We are moving on to the drug interactions of adenosine. So, what did you just study? Adverse effects. Very good. So, now the drug interactions. Patients on carbamazepine. Carbamazepine is actually an anti-epileptic drug. Anti-epileptic drug. Uh, patients on this are uh, at greater risk for developing heart block. Okay. Actually, they are saying that if somebody drinks tea or coffee, you will have to give more of adenosine. Higher doses are required in heavy tea or coffee drinkers. Nice, na? Okay, that's all for now in uh, adenosine, guys. We are done with uh, adenosine. So basically, you saw it is a drug for uh, treating paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. Try the well salva maneuver. If it doesn't work, the drug of choice is adenosine. But if the patient is asthmatic, verapamil is the drug of choice. Verapamil is drug of choice right here. Verapamil is drug of choice if patient is asthmatic. Okay, remember this. Then... Uh, it is ultra short acting endogenous purine signal molecule. It's T half of just 10 seconds. It is converted into adenosine monophosphate and inosine. It is eliminated within a single passage through the coronary circulation. And it is uh, rapidly injected uh, either as a free base or as ATP. It terminates the episode of paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia within 30 seconds. Most of the cases at least. The mechanism of action is acts on the SA node. It act, acts on the SA node, it acts on the AV node, it also acts on the atrium, right? And um, basically it is going to uh, depress the pacemaker, it is going to cause bradycardia, it's going to, prolong, it's going to slow the conduction of the AV node, it's going to shorten the action potential and reduce excitability in the atrium. It activates the acetylcholine potassium channels also, so um, 
potassium channels, right? So basically, it is going to do reverse of the sodium, right? Then it is going to reduce the calcium current. In the AV node, it's going to reduce the calcium current. Remember, it's going to reduce the calcium current in the AV node. And depression of this reentrant circuit through AV node is the responsible for termination of majority of the paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. This is the main cause they are saying. Something extra written here, extra written here. Advantage of uh, adenosine over verapamil is that it is uh, efficacy is better than uh, verapamil. Its action is uh, uh, very fast. Adverse effects are also transient. There is you can give it to patients who are on beta blockers, who have hypotension, who have congestive heart failure. Also, you can give verapamil is contraindicated in these situations. Adenosine can also be given to people who have wide QRS tachycardia. And if somebody is not responding to verapamil, we can give adenosine. Guys, this is uh, just a textbook reading, you know, right? Okay. So, adenosine uses, you are going to use it to treat paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, also for diagnosis of tachycardia, which are dependent on the AV node. Adverse drug reaction, chest pain, fallen blood pressure, uh, ventricular fibrillation can occur, ventricular standstill can occur, bronchospasm, hence don't give it to people who are asthmatic, okay. So you have to give it rapid IV, etc. You cannot give it for prophylaxis because its duration of action is very uh, less. Drug interactions, patients on carbamazepine are at greater risk for developing heart block. So that's all for now with uh, adenosine. Hope you have enjoyed uh, this antiarrhythmic drug. We will meet you in the next video. Bye-bye.